here, just sitting here on my porch, having my coffee with all of you. It's a beautiful, beautiful morning, and it is, ooh, the sun is just beating down on me. You know, I may consider getting some kind of a shade for right here in front, because it gets really, really hot on this porch. But anyhow, I have been shutting the refrigerator off at night, and today I'm going to try it at the number three setting, just to see if everything stays cold enough. And I think that's going to save me a little bit of my solar battery energy storage, whatever. Um, so today I'm going to see if I can get that solar mini frame, just something to attach all three panels together that will make it easier for me to pull them around and prop them up. Um, it's going to be very basic, it's not permanent definitely, but I have to do something now because I'm beginning to notice that my, it's hurting my back trying to lift them up and move them. Each panel, you know, it's hard to move them one at a time when they're not connected because of the, the way the wiring is, so you almost have to lift all three at once and kind of, it's just weird, it's it's hard to do. So um, I think having them all three together and being able to pull just the wiring together, secure it in the back and just move them around that way, it's going to be easier. So I'm going to get that done today. I also wanted to show you a few things that's going on in the garden. Yeah, there's some, some pretty decent updates. So, well, let's just get this day started. And here is a great frame build. All it is is two pieces of wood on the top and on the bottom, and that is drilled with uh, Z brackets. It's connected with Z brackets for the Harbor Freight solar panels. They're not exactly right, but they're what I had, and um, they worked okay. The wood isn't the sturdiest, and I will have to change things eventually, but I really needed to do something to kind of simplify things, you know, for the time being. So that's what I did, just one on the top, one on the bottom. You can see the little brackets there. And um, one thing I do wish is that the connectors that I used to connect each of the two panels at this point, you know, uh, underneath of them, they were from the Harbor Freight panels too, and they're just a little bit too short. So I had to use like a, a screw on one side and a bolt and um, zip ties and whatnot. But it worked. It got them together. And here's the back. I need to fix those wires so they will fit a little bit better but this is just the piece of wood on the back and like I said not very sturdy um, one thing I do want to do is at these junctures here uh, get another flat plate hopefully that's long enough and connect them at this point too so they'll be sturdier and here's me <laughs> kind of muddling through trying to move it around and they're actually kind of heavy so I'm um, just kind of walking them back works a little bit and then you have to pull the um, the wires out of the way but it worked. What I'd like to do is get a hand truck or some kind of cart or something that I can mount them on so that it'll, it'll be easier just to roll them around. Um, I mean, I can see it in my, in my head and I know it's going to work better. So for the beginning of the day, I just put the solar panels kind of like down in this position. I prop one up with a piece of wood. Um, could be a little bit higher, but uh, that's okay. Uh, I think it'll work okay like this for the time being, at least temporarily, and at least until the wood fails. So early in the morning, uh, the panels are facing this way, and the sun's really high in the sky, so, you know, the panels could be a little bit higher, but they need to be kind of low. And then during the middle of the day, I put them against the bed this way, and then at the end of the day, I put them facing this way as the sun is going down. So, yep, I just propped it up with a little piece of wood. Not the perfect solution, but I worked with what I had, and I will shore it up eventually. I'll either like to get some wheels on the bottom of that, or maybe get just like a hand truck or something, um, or a little cart to attach it to, to move it around. But it's a lot better. It's going to be a lot easier. I just need to secure those wires in the back. So let's go have a look at my plants. Most of the herbs have stayed the same, but whatever I planted, I think I actually planted some deal in here. Uh, doesn't look like dill though. I don't know. We'll see. It's starting to come up and it's only been a few days. So all this is going to get watered. Everything else here is pretty much, you know, whatever. Cucumbers have all got flowers on them. I don't see any actual cucumbers yet, but that'll come. And it looks like they're trying to reach for something. So I'm going to help train them up here a little bit. This one's reaching way over. That's not good. Come on, buddy. There. You just go that way. Uh, these beans, their color's looking better, but, oh, 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 oh my goodness. Hold on a second. Hold on. Look at that. That's a green bean. <sighs> I've got a bean. Okay, yeah, I get a, I'm going to let that grow, and hopefully I'll get more beans. Yay! Lettuce is getting better, but I'm still not impressed. 
you know, I just feel like cutting it all down and eating it in a salad right now. Here's the Willy Wonka garden. Yep, the uh, zucchinis are doing just fine. Eh, the onions, I don't know. I haven't really checked them too much lately. But I'm getting blooms on these zucchinis, and I'm doing absolutely nothing with these. I'm not even watering them. Same with the mammoth dill, which, uh, well, it's trying to get a little bit bigger, but, you know... I kind of neglect this area down here, just kind of like a wild garden, but you know what? There's a couple things that are doing all right. Man, I need to weed around this garden. So these little two things at the end aren't doing anything really, and all those peppers that I planted from seed are not growing, so I'm just going to ignore them. If they live, they live. They die, they die. But I'm not going to expend a bunch of water on them because I have already, and they're just not doing anything. So this, this one is getting some little flowers on it here and there. Ooh, ooh, what do we have here? What is this? What is it? What? I don't think you belong on my plant. Mm -mm. Look back in there. I'm getting a fruit. Yay. These are the red cubanelles. So hopefully, we'll, oh, there's another one too. Oh, I'm such a bad camera person. It's there, just trust me. And I can't see real up close with my glasses on, so I have to keep taking them off. Huh, sucks getting old. Watermelon doing absolutely nothing, even after I fertilized them. Uh, the Brussels sprouts, well, they are starting to get a few new leaves, but you know what, I just don't know if I can grow these out here. Cucumbers out here, they aren't dead yet, but you know. This is the uh, spaghetti squash. I've got some blooms on it. But uh, these plants don't look very healthy. I think they need some water. All right, the beans out here look pretty terrible. But I have, look, see that? There's a little tomato right there. I got a tomato there. Ooh, I got another tomato. Where is it? Right there, see it? Uh, do I have more tomatoes over here? Not yet. I got another tomato here. And another tomato here. And this is all after I had fertilized. Here's a zucchini. Don't have any actual zucchinis yet. Let me get out of the light. No actual zucchinis, but I gotta get in here and weed this today. All of this is getting water too. Uh, so that's that about that. This is the butternut squash. It's trying to take off a little bit. And then absolutely nothing else going on over here. Look at this. I got me an eggplant growing. Man, I'm going to need to start watering more and more and more. These little things will dry up. And I got a few more blooms on there. Oh, and I uh, planted some of the thyme down here because it says it's supposed to be beneficial for each plant. So I just planted a little bit out here. And, oh, go. Oops. Uh, I've got me a little fruit growing here, and this is the green bell peppers, finally. Green bell peppers are finally starting to grow. Thank you. Okay. And these carrots are bouncing back. I'm surprised as heck. So I don't know. Maybe I will get some carrots. These uh, potatoes, I keep hilling them up. All those other ones that were coming up here, I probably killed them because I smothered them. But um, they keep growing up and up and up, and the plants look pretty healthy. So these are going to get a nice watering today, too. And then this is the red, sweet red pepper plant. Ah, uh, yep, there's a little fruit there. There's several fruits on this one, so I'm really happy about that. This is the, I think it's the giant, yeah, jalapeno pepper. I've got plenty of little, little things growing in there. No actual jalapenos yet, but they'll come. They'll come. And then this is the cayenne red pepper. Finally, we're getting some blooms on this. Thank goodness. So these are all getting water today. And hopefully things will turn around. Well, anyway, I did want to tell you guys something that happened last night. And it kind of was unsettling for me. It's between 9 and 9.30, pitch dark outside, and I hear somebody coming up my drive. And they're driving pretty slow, and they had the headlights on and everything. And I'm like, what the heck? Who is pulling? Nobody pulls up my drive. So I went to the window, and the person approached the tiny house, and the security light went on, and it showed in her face, and she was, like, real surprised. 
And I looked at her. She was a very thin woman, uh, blonde woman. Um, she said her name was never seen her before. I, I just looked out the window. I says, who are you? Who are you and what are you doing here? And she says, oh, I was looking for Crystal. Um, you know, she lived here before and I've been in the city and I've been getting chemo treatments and I've lost touch with all my friends, so I'm just trying to find them. And I'm like, look, I don't know anybody named Crystal. Um, and everything about her, the facial expressions, her body language, told me that number one, she was lying. Number two, she's on drugs. And it was unsettling. So, I mean, Betty was barking so loud that um, I had to actually step outside, which was probably a mistake because now that I think about it, there could have been some, somebody else in that vehicle. And um, so I stepped outside and I says, now what's going on? And she relayed the whole story. And I'm like, I don't know, any, I don't know anybody by that name. I've, I bought this property in February and maybe the people next door know who they are. Um, so she ended up going next door and they kind of sent her on her way too. But it was just really, real, God, there's a bunch of flies like right here. It was really unsettling. I didn't like that. I told her, nobody pulls up my drive. And she's like, oh, sorry. But just her body movements, um, you can tell. And you can tell by the kind of emaciation that they have and the look on their face and their jaw. Um, if somebody's on meth, it messes them up. It changes them from looking like a normal person to a sickly, well, you've seen meth heads, right? Okay, so that's what she looked like. Um, I knew she was lying, and her body movements and everything made me very uncomfortable. And, um, oh, and then she's like looking around like, oh, she's looking at my solar panels and looking at the tiny house and everything. And, oh, well, you're doing very well. And I'm like, thank you. Uh, maybe you should go next door and check with them. So I think next time um, I will not leave the tiny house. Um, I will talk to them through the front door, and I'm not going to give them as much opportunity to converse with me because nobody in their right mind would come out here in the pitch dark after dark between 9 and 9.30 and just come down a long country drive and knock on somebody's door unless they were there to do, do something not good, okay? Um, it's just inappropriate. You know, what, what I felt is if she was looking for her friends, she would know their phone number. <laughs> you know, she would know their phone number, and if they were truly her friends, if their phone number changed, they would have kept in touch with her. They would have been seeing her while she was in the hospital. But no, she's been gone away, and she's, you know, I think, you know, when people say they've been gone away for a while, well, she's probably been in jail. I know this is being judgmental, but you know what? I have gone through a lifetime of misjudging people to their benefit and it ends I end up getting you know I ended I've ended up misjudging people so much in the past and so I'm learning I really am learning to pick up on things and this female that was here was up to no good and I tell you what she better not ever come back because I will call the police I didn't even see what kind of vehicle she was in it was so dark outside so I just wanted to share that with you um I don't know. I, I shouldn't be so judgmental, but you know what? I have to be careful and I have to go with my instincts. And my instincts told me that she is a drug addict and a thief, and I don't want her on my property. I don't want drugs near me. I don't want people who buy drugs near me. I don't want people who sell drugs near me. I don't want people who are looking for them. And meth is the worst. The absolute worst drug you can do. Well, heroin is pretty bad too, but meth is, meth is so much different. I mean, it changes... Their brain has those people will do anything to get money, to get their drugs. They will, they will do such inappropriate and unacceptable things to be able to steal from people and um, just to get money. So she's looking at my solar panels. I'm like, Phew. so I don't know. Um, I'm thinking of getting some uh, trail cams or something. At least if, if somebody's going to steal from me, I'm going to know who they are. So... I don't know, it just bugged me, bugged me last night. Anyway, sorry, I had to come in the tiny house and change my shirt. It's super hot, and that was just, that shirt is just, like, huge on me. Anyhow, another thing that bothered me is she heard the dog barking, and she's like, oh, well, it's a good thing you, uh, you have a dog if you live out here alone. And that is the, that is what thieves do to try and get information from you. They want to know if you're living alone, if you have a dog, if you have a gun. So I told her I don't live alone. And, um, you know, I made mistakes last night. I should have not had a conversation with her at all. 
I should have told her to get the F off my property. Um, although I probably wouldn't use that word. I would have just said, look, you need to leave or else I'll call the police. Next time if, I, if that happens, um, I will definitely do that. But it just made me really uncomfortable. I mean, I know a thief when I see him. And I've come across quite a few of them in my time. And uh, there's no way I'm going to let anybody steal from me. So I'll let Mr. Lucas know. And, um, you know, I'm almost afraid to leave the property now. What if this weirdo comes back? Oh, weirdo. <laughs> Takes one to no one, right? Anyway, Betty and I just went into town, took a little drive in the truck. And Betty loves the truck. She just uh, looked out the window the whole time. And she didn't seem as pensive as when she was in the van. So that's good. We're going to take many drives together. Hopefully, eventually, I'll get my Tennessee fishing license and uh, take her on some fishing trips because I have not brought my fishing poles even out of the van. And gosh, I hope they're not like damaged in there with all the stuff I've got packed in there. But um, yeah, so that's that. That's what happened. Anyhow, that's all I got for you guys today. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell, and y'all have a good one.